Hello there, my name is Mark, and these are my Dice Tales, and today I've been playing The Old Scrolls Call to Arms Skyrim. Uh, I hope you haven't thought put this one on the shelf, because I've really had some anxiety about playing it. Uh, mainly because I've dropped the miniatures, I've just gone for the core rules, and I'm going to be proxying the game with my 15mm fantasy collection. And then I realised when I was playing it on a 2x2 foot mat, um, that that's the intended size, and I could use my 28mm. Um, but I am downgrading and I'm going sort of 15 mil. which is kind of thing, my 2020 phase. Um, so I've done a back rep. This is the table that you got set up uh, beside me. That way, that way. <laughs> um, these were my homemade underground tiles. And I basically jumped in in Delve number four. I went for a non-standard. I went for an Imperial Mage as my main character followed by two lackeys, uh, two Imperial Swordsmen, who were just bog-standard uh, grunts with two hit points. And I just had the Flame Spell and the Fire Spell. I wanted to get my head around the rules again, because I, I that was another part of the anxiety. Sort of, it felt a bit chunky, the rules, compared to the other games I've played recently. There seems to be a lot more to remember, but it was easier than I thought. I'm still going to check out the Errata. Um, I have to log in add it to carts and download it for free, unfortunately. Um, and it's forgetting passwords, so things I need to check up on. But this is the game. Uh, it's only a photo back rep. I'm hopefully doing a video back rep soon, maybe a bit of the how to play video uh, with the basics where after all, a pool of dice, including a green dice with your 20 sided dice, things like that. And let's see how it goes. So this is the game. So I'm playing the Realm of the Dead. Uh, the mission has you start in the top corner. Uh, on this map, if you see on the very top right hand corner, there's a little wooden plaque. I'm coming in from a sort of a cave entrance up there and filtering on. Then, opposite that corner, on the opposite side of the table, is the treasure zone. And I was playing at 100 septims, so that mo that's the scenario setup has me put three uh, objectives on the table. Followed by, cause again, because I'm at 100 septims. Uh, for treasure tokens, and they all need to be six inches apart. Even though I'm playing with 15 millimeter miniatures, I did go down the route of playing with inches instead, which is unusual. I'm quite excited that I could scale this down even further to a one by one foot mat, to be honest. To me, you might see another game on that, because I think it'll capture the 15 millimeter detail of the 15 millimeter models much better, because uh, this map is busy and I think they get lost in it, to be honest. Uh, so, I was delving, I had to get to three objectives, and the main way you, you actually scored objectives was by wiping out the enemy. But to score a great score, because it's a bit like a board game in the sense that you can have a weak score where you did poorly, a sort of not very good score, and then a good score. I think there's only three brackets. Have I got a rule book to hand? This is the quest book here. Bam. Wow. Let's just see... And there's a bit of chopping and changing to know, understanding which which rules come from versus mode and which rules come from uh, delve being solo cooperative mode. Yes, so there's lose, narrow victory, or solid victory. Now, because I was playing at 100 septims, that means my adversary pool was 125 septims. I think that gave me three skeleton archers, two Draugr. Swordsman and one Draugr Overlord. And even if you achieve the three oaths, I don't think you get the upper level of narrow victory, 15 victory points, without doing more. But then I remembered once you killed an enemy, it's going to go into the spawn pool and come back on when you draw the event. So it's a bit of a learning game, get me back into it. And that's about it, that's all you need to know about the mission. So let's click through the quick slideshow, about 10, uh, 10 slides. Uh, so this is a table set up with the objectives now on the board. This was going to be, I was going to be Hadvar and the Imperial Swords Mage, but um, my points were creeping up and I wanted to try and keep it, keep it on the lower side. So I went with the Imperial Mage and uh, two generic followers, not even a good follower like, like Hadvar. So I, was, I was trying to do these two and then when I added the armour to them both, I think it's getting a little bit expensive, near the 150 point mark, which would have I would have had a full pull, full pull of enemy. That's what I like about this game, the low model count. Uh, so this game had about 10 models on the board, and this scenario actually starts the uh, adversaries on the board as well. So 
it says start one on each objective and then if there's any overflow add those to the treasure tokens any any out over that which i doubt you would have would go into the spawn pool to come on for an event card okay this is these are my little 15 mil um so skeleton archers drago swordsman and the drago with his sword raised who's not in the picture uh he is my overlord i think i need to get a more buff overlord okay as we went into the mission um the spawn pool, the spawn point, is down the opposite edge of the table on one of the sides. And my tactic was I thought I would go rush that and then sort of flee backwards along the objectives. I think I'll change my tactic for that next game. We'll still come to that in the slide above. But I split my party. A squirrel running across my fence. Cool. Uh, anyway, I split my party. So I had one of my sword mages, uh, sword Imperial Swordsman, and my mage go down towards the enemy spawn point, thinking they're the stronger ones they can take on coming enemy. So I try and carve through the enemy. One sticks them with a sword, one sticks them with a flame. I wonder if I really need a longer range weapon or something like that, to be honest. But we uh, we moved and hid, we moved and blocked, and, and sort of moved down that passageway. My other lackey, uh, this chap with a sword and shield here, he went off on his own to see if he could sneakily steal um, an objective from a skeleton archer. Unfortunately, one of the other swordsmen rushed in and sort of kept him back. Uh, he was the first blood in the game, in the mission. As the sword mage and the other imperial swordsmen uh, were attacked, I was very lucky to uh, get a divine inspiration. And when I struck back at the swordsman, I was able to reroll a critical fail, uh, any number of dice. So I believe that is right, uh, and strike that swordsman dead. I can't remember what was going on in this roll, but the red dice is my armour, and the, obviously, I think the two... I think it was a ranged attack. I think the cross swords means it was a, an archer shooting at me from quite a distance away. So, the five minus a three, meaning he got under his ability score to hit. The yellow dice show his damage, three, which is quite a lot. So that would kill a lackey and kill my sword maze, actually, without, if I didn't get any armour roll. I like it when he roll a full armour roll like that. Uh, this is my sword mage moving into the combat, so we're now outnumbering the enemy and we're sticking our swords in. Then my mage moves on ahead to the first objective, but this is, these skeletons are right on their spawn point. There's a treasure point right next to them as well, so it's a very dangerous area to be in. Now the spawn point just says anywhere down the edge. I spawn them as close to my, my heroes as possible. Uh, I do wonder if I should go down, maybe mark a quadrant down the... Um, down the edge and then roll a dice to see where they're going to come on, give me a bit of randomness, because where they came on, if I killed one of those, the event card at the end of the turn is just going to bring another one back on again, and that felt relentless in that game. Uh, so here they are, an archer and a swordsman spying my chap, my chappy mage on the objective. I let them sc scramble up there without much difficulty, I didn't have skeletons rolling agility to climb. I did think about that, because the tactic, one of the um, pillars in the game was a very good sniping roost for one of the skeletons and I was wondering about rolling agility which is very bad for a skeleton or just sort of get him and climb up there and say yes he can get up there because I'm the dungeon master I'm the solo dungeon master this is my game so I'm unerring I went I stuck with the game and so I had him move closer so he'd get his extra green dice anyway as I was contending with that spawn point I had my wounded lackey he, he fought off the uh, Draugr swordsman and was moving around the pool in the centre, which had a bit of treasure on it, uh, and came moving to my to rescue and team up with my wizard on the other side of the lake. However, that was short-lived. The Draugr, the Overlord, crept in. He was at the far, far, far back, the opposite start point to my men. He'd finally awoken and come around and caught my poor swordsman in the back, slaying him outright. After that. Uh, this is only turn three. Uh, turn two, I think we found extra treasure. Turn three, the event found a secret passageway, and I had that secret passageway leads lead to a little island with treasure on the lake area in the middle of my sunken smuggler's cave. To escape the spawn point, <laughs> I went down that secret passageway, I blasted a skeleton, went down the secret passageway, opened up a chest. Luckily, it wasn't trapped. Uh, no, sorry, it wasn't uh, locked. It was trapped, however, and it rolled maximum damage on me. 
I did roll a red dice, I could have survived on one hit point, but I did actually call it game there, because I had an overlord right next to me, a skeleton archer right next to me. Everything was literally surrounding me, I was one lucky down, uh, so I called it on turn four, My the end of my <laughs> forage into Skyrim, ended with my wizard caught in a bear trap, rummaging for treasure. So, yeah, great game guys. I love it, I, it was very enjoyable, it was short and sweet unfortunately for me, and it was a real rules cop, so it was slower than I would have wanted. I would, wouldn't want to put that sort of speed. Editing it would have been taking too much time. Um, but I'm looking for a video again soon. I'm happy that I got over my anxiety of not playing with the right models and worrying about the rules. You jumping on? Come on. Are you saying hello on the on Twitter morning YouTube? No. My little mascot, and that is it. So I just wanted to keep um, a quick video saying yes, I am visiting Skyrim. Yes, I am interested in the sword packs. Fingers crossed I've got a scenario in the competition. I can get some nice miniatures. Um, and that's it. That's that's Mark's Dice Tales. It's a short and sweet one. I am rambling. So, more, Sc more Elder Scrolls Call to Arms on the way. More... Patrick Todorov's Nightwatch on the way, so two fantasy games, and possibly uh, some more 15 mil Dragon Rampant. There's That's my nice lockdown sort of trilogy at the moment. And other games, there are other games sort of fleeting in and out. Um, Brutality I'm looking at, Star Breach I'm looking at to go back to sci-fi, and obviously I've got Hardwired Campaign that I need to revisit. So, thanks for watching this, it's been a short one, but uh, do like and subscribe. If you do subscribe, I would like to know which video you're subscribing from so I know um, what to play. Star Breach wise, I think I might be cracking out my Star Wars Legion models and that's probably it. I don't think I've got anything else desperately planned. So there we are. Just a little update from me. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.